eyes that look for common. Eyes that see. says, I will take it so that the fall can do its work in America. So it was only when your world was threatened with destruction that you became what you are now. Yes. That's where we are. If you say we're on the brink of destruction, you're right. But it's only on the brink that people find the will to change. Only at the precipice do we evolve. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Alpha Vets. Good to see you guys here as you start to roll in. Chris, how are you? I'm awesome. That was great, dude. That was good. Yeah, good job. Bad. Good that's stuff. Shame. I like it. I like it. Uh, before we bring Bo on, I'm just going to give a shout out to uh, My Pillow. You can go to mypillow.com slash Alpha Vets. My Pillow 2.0. Buy one, get one free. Gives the sheets as low as $30 with the promo code six piece towel set. Clearance sale 25 bucks. My coffee, save up to 50% off, get a free my pillow, go anywhere. All season slipper closeout sale, 25 bucks with the promo code. Overstock sale still going 80% off. This will take to a, a whole bunch of other stuff. And there's a lot of good stuff on here. You can get that summer stuff, new products up at mypillow.com slash alphabets. Use the promo code alphabets. And you can also go to hopefully handmade.com, hopefully handmade.com. Upper left tab here, Alpha Vets. If you want some Alpha Vets gear, we got some hats, some hoodies, some t-shirts. If if you want to rep some Alpha Vets gear, you can go ahead and check that out at hopefullyhandmade.com. And we're going to bring Bo on. There Bo, is. how are we doing today? <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for having me back. I really enjoy speaking with both of you guys. And God bless you. Absolutely. Both. Likewise, yeah. sir. Yeah. Absolutely. We we highly enjoy when you're on the show. Uh, it's good to see you. Hope all is well. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful job on that uh, little intro. Wasn't it? He did good. Is that new? Because right? it's like yeah, right I, on target. Beautifully done. Yeah, is that, is that I, I kind of tinker around. Yeah, a little bit. I did it today. Wow. Um, tinker around a little bit here and there. And yeah, it's fun. I enjoy it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. thank you. Um, good to see you guys all here as you start to roll in. Um, as we get started here, Chris, yes, sir. Do you want to get some prayer going before we start? Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you as always for bringing us together for this opportunity for fellowship. Um, we thank you for bringing Brother Bo back once again, and uh, we just ask that you continue to guide him and speak through him. And uh, we ask for your protection over Bo and his family as uh, as we head down this. Uh, this path that you're leading many of us on. Uh, Father, and we are thankful for that walk with you right now, for the spiritual uh, eyes to see what is going on. For It's very important uh, for there are many who still can't see, and we just ask uh, each and every day that you just help uh, people like us and so many others who can see what is going on, just help us open more people's eyes to the truth. Uh, Father, we ask for your protection over my family, over Israel's family, over everybody here in the chat tonight, 
and anybody that comes across this video as always father we just ask that you place your arms around them that you protect them and then you that you keep us from harm's way father we ask for your protection over trump and his family and we just ask to god that you continue to guide him uh the and just uh, protect him from all the slings and arrows um of those who have uh, taken this country from us. Uh, Father, we ask for your protection over the uh, good men and women in our government. There are many, and we just ask that you protect them and you give uh, more and more people courage each and every day to step up and do the right thing. And we just ask uh, that you give people that courage, Father, to do the right thing and protect those that do. And as always, Father, we thank you for the, uh, the prophets and we ask you to continue to speak through them to us so that we can have the news before the news. And as always, Father, we ask you that you just help us spread this message far and wide all over the world and just help more and more people see. For we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bo, we are on the brink of summer. Yeah. <laughs> are you stoked? <laughs> Exciting. We've waited a long time. You oh know, my gosh. Yeah, it's been and then you know, and, and what is revelation, right? It's reveal, right? So he's like what we know today is magnitudes more than what it was, say in 2020 or in 2017 or 18 or 90, you know, and now that we're actually in revelation that we're and we've seen three and a half years go by, and then knowing that you know the, the, the Daniel 12 verse 7 calculation of using time times and a half a time and taking us into the end of june you got to admit like how incredible everything is happening and yet to happen so as wild and interesting that we're seeing things right now we haven't seen it get worse yet like it's supposed to get worse and why i say that is think about when jesus see because e it's going to look like evil one or is about to win. So something's about to happen where evil wins with quotes on either side of that, right? Because think of that moment at the Red Sea, or be the better example would be, think about Jesus on the cross, and then he died, right? Mm -hmm. If you were there at the time, it literally would appear, right? It would appear that evil won. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And could, because they didn't know what's going to happen, like no one really knew what's going to happen three days later. Yes, Jesus Christ said, that, you know, destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. You know, but still, they didn't, at the resurrection, they didn't believe hardly anybody. You know, like, you know, they're like, they're going, to, they, they go to go see. You know, but before the resurrection, think about those three days, right? It looked, it looked like evil one. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, and then, but more, more so, it was horrible because, you know, the apostles and all those that love Jesus watched him die and then they put him into a tomb, right? So it looked as if evil won. But then, you know, knowing the bigger, bigger story, you step back and you look down on anything, you know, years later and you realize evil didn't win. Evil was so stupid, he walked right into God's plan to cause Jesus to be the Passover lamb that you now don't even, don't even need a third temple anymore because Jesus <laughs> ends up being the, the, you know, the sacrifice, the lamb. Right. So it, it's going to get worse, just like at the Red Sea, they thought they were going to be killed only to watch the Red Sea part, right? So what I'm trying to say is things are going to heat up yet into the end of this month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that means because I don't know. God hasn't revealed it. See, God will reveal the secrets to his servants, the prophets. That's Amos, right? But I'm telling you, the, the final kill shot, the checkmate, he didn't tell Moses what he was going to do with the Red Sea. It wasn't until Moses raised the staff that he saw what God's plan was. See, that was the checkmate move. If God had revealed to anybody that if you kill Jesus, he's going to rise in the third day, and this is and make sure you make sure you do it on Passover, right? They wouldn't have done it. 
Right. You see, so evil is walking today, every single day so far, they're walking right into God's checkmate. But we don't know what that checkmate event is. And we really don't know the exact day he's going, God's going to strike. Because mm-hmm. both those things are, are a secret. We don't know the day and the hour because that's that's scriptural. But from a calculation standpoint, if we use Daniel 12, verse 7, it says it'll be for time, times, and a half a time. That's three and a half years or 1,260 days. So if when corona comes on the scene, January 12th, 2020, when it's first diagnosed case, you go 1,260 days, precisely June 25. So that, what is that? 20 days away? 20 to 19 days away? Whatever. Yeah. I'm just saying it's super close. Okay? Right. And then the other calculation would be uh, when we talked about Rosh Hashanah, right? So God's Jubilee began on Rosh Hashanah. That's his day one. That's God's New Year is Rosh Hashanah. So that's last one was September 25. And so we're in the 50-year cycle. And so Rosh Hashanah would be conception. Nine months, we're looking to childbirth, right? The birth of a new era. So nine months from September 25 is, oh, June 25, the exact <laughs> same day. Right. A day before June 25 is extremely important. Why? What happened last year, June 24th? It's not Roe v. Wade. Wade. Yes. Okay. Yep. And then yep. three days before that, what's what's three days before June 24th? June 21. Well, what's that? Summer solstice. Right? Trump just happens to be 77 years and seven days. Not that it means anything, but it's, you know, coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> That's our yeah. Denny. Right? Yeah. So between the 21st and the 25th, talk about four powerful, talk about a t- powerful time point for our world. What happens? It's a secret. The day it goes down, it's a secret. I'm just saying that there's such little time for things to manifest. And there's so many other layers of of this we can talk about, right? Because another layer to this equation, right? God created everything in how many days? Six, right? Mm -hmm. And he rested on the seventh, which means he's going to rest in what month? Mm. July. Strange July. He's going to rest in July because he... His, he acted, his final move was in what? The sixth month, June. Okay. Right? Nice. Okay. Because June's the sixth month. We know he's not, if, you know, in our year, our calendar, the sixth month is June. The seventh month is July, potentially, since we're, you know, running our calendar right now. My thought would be that, you know, God, we're not going to, you know, there's going to be and a massive event goes down here in June that 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 sets the stage because when God moves, the best example I can give when God moves, think of it like a train um, and and coming into a, a fork in the road, right? And right now the world is in a, is, is on a certain direction. It's on a direction that no one can stop. This is a, lo- a locomotive train that no one can stop because it's just so powerful. It's been going for 6,000 years, right? This is the, you, you can't stop this train. But when God intervenes, he takes the train, the direction, I mean, the direction the world is going and puts it in a, on a new set of tracks. Get it? Yep. And so in July, we're on the new tracks. The, the pivot point is June. Is that a good visual? Yeah. Yeah, I understand so, it. And it's and it's and it's interesting that also coincidentally, because there aren't <laughs> any, <laughs> June just happens to be what? Pride month. Pride month. Right? And the video you played right, the clip you had right in there. What did the guy say? He what did he say about destruction? And the, the clip right? only at the brink of destruction will people yeah. find the will to change. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. And so Proverbs 16, verse 18, pride cometh before destruction. That's right. That's right. I'm not making this up. No, I'm you're not. just putting scriptures into present day because we live in end times. How amazing is all of this? And, oh. and in the sixth month, if you read Ezekiel 8, Verses 1 through 12, in the sixth year, in the sixth month of the fifth day, while I was, so that was Ezekiel Ezekiel 1, 
uh, while I was uh, sitting in the uh, in my house, and the elders of Judah were sitting before me, the hand of the sovereign sovereign Lord came down. So, does the hand of the sovereign Lord come down in June? I don't know what happened in history. When you also read Luke one, it says in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary in the month of June. Six mm. So all I know is that we're in a very powerful time point uh, or a very powerful and important month. Let's leave Absolutely. it. Absolutely. The calculations that I've been talking about with you on your podcast for mm -hmm. three months now, I think of all we've always talked about how this is racing into the end of June because the end of June, the 25th, is the end calculation date. That doesn't mean so that from regards to birth, right? That would be the delivery expected delivery date. Okay. But from a birth yep. standpoint, it could be the delivery could be a little before, a little after, right? Mm -hmm. And how is that? Why is that important? Because no one knows the day or the hour. Get well, it? yeah. I mean, if you if you even like look at it, like right in that same prophecy, he talks about strange July. So if God acts, and some in July hits, I mean, you can imagine how strange July would be if evil just all of a sudden took a blow. Right. Uh, right. That's the it, like, point, right? Because because that would be the mortal wound that evil gets. That's written in Revelation 13, I believe. But this would be Babylon, Babylon, the great has fallen. Okay? So you're mm -hmm. right. Strange July, strange July. Why would it be strange? You described it perfectly, Israel. Think, why would it be strange? Um, the dollar just lost the status of the world of currency. Um, evil was exposed to what they were doing. The world mm -hmm. just discovered they've been lied to for hundreds or thousands of years. The, the people tried to wake up, the great awakening. People are like, what the heck is going on in our world? It's just everything evil that was controlling us also is not there anymore. Ooh, strange July. Like, and we don't know, right? But now it kind of started to make right. sense, isn't it? Right? Yeah, it does. It does. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember last year we were talking about Strange July and even after July ended, I was like, well, wasn't, wasn't strange, strange enough. Strange, so <laughs> no, the Guidestones, right? We had the Georgia I mean, Guidestones guy. There's some like, stuff, there some but it wasn't. Weird... No, no, it wasn't and, anything and then, major. And then I think the, we were and hoping. Then, yeah, we were all hoping. And then the, but the really big one that hit was well, three months ago, I think I, I got the, the, the big reveal of Daniel 12, verse 7, where God literally said, you got to you gotta count from Corona, from, from, from the seal being opened. And when you count from the seal being open, you'll see the mouth. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. It lands right on the – it fulfills the Kim Clement prophecy. Mm -hmm. Like, talk about crazy um, – um, our God's amazing how crazy awesome that is. It lands right. – it fulfills – that scripture fulfills the prophetic word of Kim Clement. It's it right to the mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was – yeah, I'll go ahead and pull it up. Yeah, it's right there. Look at mm -hmm. this, right? So Corona comes on the scene, right? So Corona comes on, they see January 12th, first diagnosed case outside of China, right? 1260 days, June 25. A day before that is June 24. That's a year from when Roe v. Wade is overturned. Three days before that is a summer solstice. So now 25th is ready summer. Is it not, right? So there's your summer start right there, end of June. Takes us into 45-day window, which is into the there's, there's reason for this, but this is, in, this is scriptural, how it's like 1,260, but it's also, there's a 45-day window and a 30-day window. Um, so the 45-day window is going to take us into August 9th. So that would literally line up right here for summer is the mediator between spring and fall. So we are in the tail end of spring. And then so the fall can do its work in America. Well, what does fall do, right? Well, it's the destruction. Because when the truth comes out, people are going crazy. What the heck is – and then you have – and then the summer brings the two E's, right? So earthquakes, eruptions. Yep. So we're going to have earthquakes and eruptions in summer as well. And then because the God's re reshaping, reforming, and getting the earth set up for the new era that's now birth starting 
August onwards. That's mm -hmm. right. So all of this is playing beautifully into the prophetic word of Kim Clement from 2014, which you played in. So then, and then that is so the great wealth transfer will be here in the summer. Well, be before summer. Right. So, so. Hey, I, I was cutting up uh, Donna's most recent video she posted. And I thought of you like right away because he he says time, time and a half. Mm -hmm. And ah, and I, yep. I got to show you. <laughs> yep, I got I got to show you. it. China will endeavor to try and come and rise up. Against this land and against Israel with the pact that they wish to make with Iran, that there shall be betrayal from Russia, that shall make them angry, they shall withdraw, for there shall be another time and a time and a half a time and again a time, that shall be given to the saints of the Most High God, and a judgment shall be made from the Supreme Justice in favor of the saints of the Most High God. Uh, I'm not here to, to politically portray uh, or to lay out what's going to happen. I, all I'm telling you is what I saw, and I'm revealing to you that it's, it's, it's going to be devastating for a time. But do you notice what he said in that prophecy, the Lord? He said, at this time, when this happens, a judgment will be made by the Supreme Justice in favor of the saints of the Most High God that they'll not only receive, but they will possess the kingdom. Uh, what it means is you'll possess the portion that is due to you at this time. That's what it means. So I mean, he kneels at the time, time and a half time. And then and then he talks about the, the kingdom being grasped by the people. And then the portion is given out. And it's almost too perfect, especially with with your slides. Yeah, this is what he's referenced. So this is what God revealed to <laughs> me three said months ago. How crazy! Mm -hmm. It's it's it will be. It's right here. It will be. What is it? What is it? It means it means evil, right? Evil will be for a time, times and a half a time, which is three and a half years or twelve hundred and sixty days. And so you can lay this chart into it, and there is your evil cycle right here, which ends right here, June twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. And you got summer will be the mediator, which is right there, and then so the fall can do its work in America. But then what he's describing is so the, so we we get our what he's saying is the wealth transfer we get our inheritance back here, get it? So when mm -hmm. evil comes when they lose, when when summer comes when summer begins right here, evil loses control of the financial system. When they lose control of silver, silver is the bank killer. Silver will destroy the banks. So when silver explodes in price, the banks collapse. Because they've been selling silver back and forth for, for decades. Between two banks, right. two, three banks, they just sell back and forth. So when silver explodes in price, it will just, it will take down the banking institutions. And so that's why summer it will be strange because we're like, what the heck's going, you know, what the heck happened to our financial system, right? And so that then leads into the glory that August onwards. And what is the glory? The, the wealth transfer, you know, we got, you got the, the, the finances, we start seeing, you know, we get our, so what are you saying? We get our inheritance back. We get what's deserved to rightfully to us. What does that mean? Adam and Eve lets Satan on the earth, who's God made everything for man. Mm -hmm. He made everything for man. Evil came on the earth via Adam and Eve and stole our inheritance. Get it? So mm -hmm. we're getting our inheritance back. So the great wealth transfer is the return of our inheritance that was given to us at the Garden of Eden. We're just getting mm -hmm. it back. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the sinner is stored up Mm -hmm. for the righteous so it's, right. it's we get our inheritance back that was stolen from us so that the words yeah that's incredible that you actually reference that and he also referenced uh in that prophetic word uh russia well why see russia goes against them because russia want he, they wanted russia to be in and they, they would have been able to capture everything but instead russia went against them with the ukraine conflict right now and so that's what he's describing 
And so Russia is going to go continue going against them. And Russia is going to be directly correlated or attached to the takedown of the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. And so because they're because remember, they're, the, they're part of the BRICS and they're they're a superpower. So they're one of, right. one of the main ones leading up in or, or the, the, you know, the forefront of the BRICS taking down uh, the U.S. dollar, Babylon's money system. And yep. now, right. And, and the perfect. Babylon money system goes down. Right, they lose their control mechanism because they've used the money to control humanity. Enslavement, enslavement is control, and so when the banks go down, so are the mortgages, so are the student loans, so are all the death grants. Well, right. Well, I, I find mm. it very interesting mm. that Zero Hedge released that article talking it's about cool. the, the debt trip. jubilee, and I was like <laughs> shocked. Yeah, I, was, I, I don't post much on Twitter, but I, I'm there sometimes. And, I, and someone posted, uh, someone posted. It was really nice, nice, uh, nice tweet. The guy found the Zero Hedge article, and he goes, "Biblical," they say, and they go at Bull Pony because that's weird. <laughs> yeah, Zero yeah. Hedge published an article, biblical financial event about the, you know. And it was, I mean, it was a thorough article too. But mm -hmm. I mean, at the same time, the way I was, the way they stated it is like the Biden administration is going to have no choice but to do. It. And I don't agree with that part. Like, I don't like Biden ain't going to get credit for any of this. He's going to be gone here soon. Um, so, right. Yeah. I, yeah. They, they don't right. understand the full, you know, people still talk about the 2024 elections and all this stuff. You know, they don't understand that, you know, this is when God intervenes. Right. Um, the election schedule that we have in our world mm -hmm. here in the United States, that schedule is man made. Right. But when God intervenes, he does things on his clock. Right. 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 And his it, clock started, like, for example, September 25 is his 50 Jubilee cycle, not January 1. So he's working on his clock. Continue. Sorry. No, you're OK. Um, no, just like reg in, in regards to, you know, how you hear the prophetic talk about uh, the Red Sea. that's about to split. Everybody's talking about the Red Sea, about how this is like Exodus 2.0, but greater, the greater Exodus. Right. And yeah. there's also a death to debt prophecy where he references Moses and that time. And um, why don't everybody just take a look? Those that are wanting guidance, those who want to get to that place that God promised, even in the days of Moses, when they were traveling, they didn't have to get new shoes or new clothes. There was, they were in a state of renewal where they had no need whatsoever. I believe that that is coming upon us in this day and age. I believe that that is what God wants for His people, to be debt free. How many of you really believe it? This day and this time of Jubilee, God showed me the days when Moses and the people had no need. And when the time came, he had to stop them from giving the offerings because he had so much. That is the kind of thing that I have seen with my eyes. That is the kind of things that I have heard with my ears. That is what God said when he said, death to death. This nation shall enter into a period of time where they shall hear those words coming from the holy generation, from the chosen generation, from the royal priesthood. Death to death, say it. Death to death, say it. Death to death, say it. Death to death, death to death, death to death, death to death. So as you can see, um, death to debt, it's not only been prophesied by many. Uh, you know, it's it's always nice when you got OG Kim Clement. Uh, mm -hmm. that can pretty much line up with everything that's happening nowadays. And um, yeah, Exodus stuff and everything. It's just everything is so perfect. Right. Fully agree. And when you look at what he's saying, I wrote a few points down here, death to debt, right? What he's saying, the death to debt means death to the dollar, death to the banks, death to the Federal Reserve money system. Mm -hmm. That's what he's describing. That's right, exactly right. what he's saying. You, it's gonna, and it's going to come in with such abundance that you'll have no more needs. Mm -hmm. That's how much it comes in because in the debt jubilee, remember, they create trillions. And so when the tables flip, 
the trillions go in the other direction. So all the money they've created basically ends up being just their, their destruction because the more they made, the, the greater the wealth transfer. And right. that's really how this is playing out. And and so coming debt-free, how do you go debt-free? Well, when the banking institutions are gone, then so are the student loans, so are the mortgages, so are the um, credit cards, you know, so so are all the car and car loans. All these things just disappear. Why? Because the truth comes out of what everything was. It was one big fat lie that we've mm-hmm. been lied to for, for centuries. So that's the great awakening. Right. And, and and he was talking about the state of renewal, right? What is that? You know, the only new 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 clothes, new shoes, everything was always new, 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 new. Why? Because that's on the other side of the Red Sea, it was a moment of a time of glory. So how does that correlate to the time we live in right now? Well, it, it was right here. So that time window that you're looking at, so summer is a mediator and then the glory manifests. So what does that mean? Starting in August onwards, right? The wealth transfer probably happened, you know, here in, in now into the end of the into the summer. But mm-hmm. that the great wealth transfer that we're talking about is the death of the banks, death to debt. But that is going to come with a whole bunch of other stuff because once you have like no more needs in money, right? Then like this is this is the crazy part starts to happen, right? You start getting you know cures for cancer. Mm-hmm. They're going to come out this year. We're going to see yeah, free houses. You're going to be the, the church is going to get free homes, free land. You know, the days of struggle come to an end. You know, we're going to have auditoriums free given to us. Yeah, free, I mean, the, the churches are going to get a free, free paid off. St- st- any debts on churches all be paid off. So the, the church is enormously blessed. Why? Because it's a time of glory on earth. The mm-hmm. time of glory the world's never seen before. So what Kim was always prophesying was about this point, summer onwards, mm. right? And so now we come to realize, you know, that summer is a meteor, but it ties directly in with summer onwards. That's where you have, you know, the death to debt, you know, the no needs, debt free, a state of constant renewal. That's this time point, summer, July onwards is going to be you know the greatest time the world's ever seen in the worst time the world's ever seen because when the glory manifests you know you know you're we're pointing all these incredibly wonderful things that happen right that are going to happen but there's two sides to the coin right the ones mm-hmm. that planted evil seeds the ones that work for satan right it's going to be the exact opposite so as miraculous as all this is going to be for the church, the death to debt, they're going to experience the death. You know, the, the ones that own the banks, the ones that have monies in the banks, the ones that don't have any precious metals, you know, the one the ones that were doing all the evil against God's children. When the truth comes out of in the schools of what they were doing to the children, when the truth comes out of about what they did with the, you know, the stuff in the arm, and when the truth comes out of all this stuff, it's the other side of the coin. It's going to be the worst, the worst three and a half years these people have ever and could ever even possibly fathom because the creator is against them that's the right creator of of the universe is the god the father is now against them and 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 it's going to be you know god's called many of them out by name you know there's many prophetic words that god's already called them out by name and yeah. you know the, and the thing is you know a wayward sheep turn from your wicked ways once this and once this evil cycle ends your end of june there's no more turning from your wicked ways or wayward sheep because because venge because Isaiah 61, the year of the Lord's favor and day of vengeance. That's right here. Summer, you know, end of June, end of June, summer, you know, vengeance. And then, you know, and then it's too late. So you, you know, you basically, you know, the jo- Joshua, choose this day whom you will serve. And you know, and, and then, then then comes vengeance. And once and so the time is, I don't, you know, I just don't even know if there's any time left, but this is this is it. God's about to strike evil. And we're going to see an utter destruction. Uh, this Red Sea miracle, we don't really know what that means, but we're, we're soon going to gonna find out. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And and just like, you know, we've been telling everybody for a long time, uh, Julie talked about it this morning. What you said earlier is that things are going to look worse. But like you said, with how the banking system is going to crash, the federal system is going to crash, like the whole, like everything, that Babylonian system is falling. And... 
like God was saying in Julie's prophecy today, like you have to you have to understand that it's going to look bad, but don't fear because this is this is this has to happen in order to bring in the renewal. And, and you know, people, you know, it's it, it it may look bad. People call us crazy because because we we say things like this, like, hey, we want this this old system to fail like it needs to fail and going into everything is just it's it's such a great time to be alive yes it's going to look bad because if you're holding on to this world it's going to look horrible mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. if you're holding on to this world it's going to look horrible. You have to repeat that because, you know, we're to be in this world, not of the world. But the problem is the world we live in right now, this is the, like, the honestly, the problem with the world we live in right now, it's very simple to explain. Everything, every facet of our life is captured. Yes. Church, family, education, government, entertainment, media, all done through the money. The entire world we know is captured. Every facet of it. When when forty uh, when Biden came in and when the jackal came into office, they went pride galore. Then look at what's going on now. They they don't even hide anymore. Okay, everything's full out in the open because they know that everything's captured. Mystery Babylon, that's written Revelation seventeen verse five, controls everything, and it's all done mm -hmm. through the puppet masters. Right. And then this is the evil satanic bloodline going back to the Garden of Eden. And that's talked about in, in Revelation 2, verse 9. But this, you know, the fake Jews, the synagogue of Satan, this goes back to the Garden of Eden. It's the bloodline going back to the Garden. And so, you know, we grew up in a world, and think about this, right? United States, one nation under God, all men are created equal. Well, that was in 1776, you know, with the founding fathers. How wonderful would it have been to live with it at that time, you know, or years afterwards, right? But that world you know, that covenant that was made in 1776, you know, when, when the covenant came to be, you know, one nation founded under God, that covenant is no more. Mm -hmm. Meaning that the world is now controlled. So that was the United States ended up being Babylon. The world became drunk with her. And now the entire globe is a one world system controlled by evil. So even though we, we do have a covenant with God right now, which stands forever. Okay. So it's not mm -hmm. gone, gone. It's just, it's right now temporarily <laughs> not, not working so good. And yeah. because because evil's controlling the entire United States, therefore the world, right? When God intervenes, he's going to restore the covenant. But when God intervenes, he's going to take down Babylon. So the reason, the understanding that I want people to know is when God intervenes, the Babylon, you know, the world, you know, the United States, you know, is going to come to a sudden end. And that's going to fulfill scriptures. Babylon, Babylon, the great has fallen. And so we're about to witness this event go down. And so, yes, if you're holding on to the world, it's going to look horrible. But remember, actually, uh, it's another scripture, Daniel 2, verse 34. And I can ex ex show you that one. But basically, the fall of Babylon. So this is so where are we living right now? We're living in end time, the beginning of the end, not, not in the tribulation. Right. Okay, the beginning of it. But when you look at this, pick this is two and a half thousand year prophecy, right? So this prophecy stands to today. The only difference is it's not standing. It's Babylon is mystery Babylon now. So this statue turned into a mystery. So it's mystery Babylon. But it's right here. We're about to witness movement, the hand of God take down Babylon, right? So yes, it's going to look ugly because the world we know is about to fall apart. But what happens when something falls apart, right? What are we looking for? This will be the mortal wound to evil. But then the awesome part is what follows. It's the birth of a new era. You see, so Babylon falls and God's kingdom is born. Mm -hmm. So you have to have the collapse for the birth of the new kingdom. Does that make sense? Yes, mm -hmm. it does. So Babylon dies. The mortal wound, Babylon dies for, for a while. It's going to come back later. The, you know, the, you know, that's when the tribulation hits. But Babylon dies. Most people, many people are going to die, the evil ones. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And then the new kingdom is birthed. And there is your birth of a new era that we've been waiting for. And it happens when? It's going to fulfill Matthew 24, the beginnings of birth pain. So this will be the birth of a new era. And that's going to beautifully fulfill and tie in with the Kim Clement prophecy that we've been talking about right here. So evil switches to glory. That's right. <clears throat> so good. And and not to not to mention, um, there was there was one uh, me and Chris have talked about it plenty of times where he talks about uh, indictments in a prophecy. And he says, you know, they'll scroll across your screens, one, two, five, 10, 20 of them at a time as they are exposed. But he says one of the biggest leaders uh, before the summer comes that's been in hiding shall cry out for help. Mm -hmm. And in that same prophecy that Don A cut uh, or put out there that I cut up, um, he says this, I'm going to show you about who he's seen at the time. And he's talking about Obama, but I just want you guys to take a look. It's 15 seconds. There is someone who who has the key to deliverance in this nation. I believe it's a future president because there is something we are going to possess as the people of God and the hand of the betrayer will be revealed and hanged. So he says the hand of the betrayer will be revealed and hanged. But before that, he he states that he saw the hand of the betrayer on the table in the White House in 2010. And that's the one that will be hanged. And just like in his other prophecy, he says he'll cry out for help uh, from the, the one of the biggest leaders that have been in hiding. Obama's been hiding for for a good while now. And it, it's 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 pretty crazy to see all this just cataclysmic events all leading up to the same thing. It, it, and he it, cried out. You saw it last week he where he out. said they, they need to shut down people like us. Mm -hmm. They need to shut down all this independent media. Like the government yeah. needs to crack down on independent media. Like, cause why? Because we're getting the truth out and we're opening eyes and that's what they don't want us to do. Yeah. So this is, this is all too perfect. Like it's all too perfect. And then what we've just been talking about, I'll show this other ones. Last one I got is 30 seconds regarding the wealth. Like just one thing on Obama and then you can play down, but Obama. So I yeah. don't know the exact, I, I hear what you're saying in that script, in that prophetic word. I do know that Obama um, definitely is is one of the puppet masters pulling the strings on you know on on, on the jackal right now. So that's a for sure thing. Um, so we know that's happening. But I also know that we, in our last podcast or one of the ones we did, we um, you know the prophetic word is that Obama is saved for a later time. So he doesn't hang right now. So he's saved for a future date um, down the road. And I think you know we'll see how that one. Yeah. Okay. So so he apparently does not hang um or you know he doesn't get he flees to flees kenya. To, to kenya <laughs> well whatever but he flees uh, but, yeah, but then he, but then he i believe he comes back to power again and i believe it's through the my my personal thought would be he rises to power again through the united nations do mm. you do you do you think he's like the antichrist um, yeah, I think he will probably in the future get the Antichrist spirit in him. So not yet, but he's going to. Interesting. You know, yeah. So potentially that could play out that way. And then because even Julie Green stated that he'll be saved for a, for a, for a later date. Interesting. Yeah. So so we'll see how that, you know, again, no one knows for sure. But there's also that prophecy on my website, Gold 2024, because website, it says the one that uh, the one that brings war against Israel. And that's a Jewish boy, the 15 year old boy that didn't even know Jesus, didn't know any prophecy, nothing. He literally just died and came to life, uh, whether, whether a few hours later or a day later, whatever it was, he came back to life and he had all this prophecy. He was talking about Gog and Magog and, and they're like, what? Oh, yeah. And he knew nothing about prophecy or nothing. And he literally called out and he basically said Obama was the Antichrist. Interesting. He, he said Obama brings, so he said Obama will bring war against Israel. Which is actually funny because he just tweeted out the other day about everybody being anti-Semitic and how it needs to stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But again, see, but remember, Hitler was bad, but it wasn't until he was occupied by sit by you know by Satan, you know, where he became like horrible, right? So, so it's just like you gotta. It's I don't know how the whole thing works. I just know there's gonna be some gonna you know they're trying to resurrect uh, you know the, some crazy stuff. So whatever happens in the future, I, I believe right. he's tied in with it. But I do know that. 
evil flees first the united the world because this is the mortal wound that happens okay so the daniel 2 verse 34 the fall of babylon is the mortal wound that's written in revelation um uh, revelation 13 and so the mortal evil gets a mortal wound and that will be caused mortal means dead so evil is right. killed so the evil that's death that's death to debt because they control the debt so when mm -hmm. evil dies so does their debt system death to debt so that's what we're going to see and that's revelation 13 but then later describes the um that's the beast then rises again is resurrected is the mortal wound is healed and that's the beast system that rises in the future so the beast system is, is still going to rise but not right now right now we're going to see the death um, to the evil system in our world right on yeah i i mean i could i could totally see obama being it um considering you know he's 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 a great public speaker he's got he's got that charismatic attitude and um everybody seems to like the guy even though he's a terrible person yeah exactly and that's that's the thing right and this and so these people you know they kind of rise to power and you know so again god knows not me i'm just trying to put pieces together and that's farther in the future right. so it doesn't really matter right now but no. i do know that um, a specific prophetic word by julie was he, he's being set aside for a later date okay. fair enough that was specifically stated uh so that the mortal wound that we talk about this is it right here uh i do have a little piece of fun that god showed me this weekend i think you're gonna like uh, let's, okay uh so remember, remember evil is going to get a mortal wound okay so evil gets killed Right, mortal wound means evil is killed. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, page 25, Genesis 6, verse 3. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. Like, okay, that's interesting. So I know that we know that this year is a year of Jubilee. So we know this is the fulfillment of Kim Clement prophecy. So we go back 120 years and we get to 1903. I'm like, hmm, I remember something happened in 1903. So I Googled and sure enough, it was the uh, Wright brothers' first flight. So you're going to find this interesting, right? So remember the, remember the 120. Are you with me? So let's mm -hmm. read. On the morning of December 9th, 17th, 1903, uh, the Wright brothers took the flight and monitored their flying machine in Kill Devil Hill. <laughs> uh, it just happened to fly 12 seconds and 120 feet uh, just fun. It's, it's just fun but yeah. what is the probability that that it happened on kill devil hill so yep. from the first flight 120 years fulfilling genesis 6 verse 3 saying that the devil is killed in the year 2023 oh that's good fulfilling, that's interesting. fulfilling revelation 13 the mortal wound all right so there you go. So That's you cool. had another video you wanted to play. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always got videos I want to play. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, this, uh, you know, it's just, uh, I'll just show it. 30 seconds. In Frederick, Maryland, I prophesied there is a snake hidden in the capital. God says, I will bring it out. And this exposure shall cause the nation to shake. But God said the shaking is good for America. You're about to embark on a journey that you have never embarked upon before. And from the south of your land and throughout the middle of your country, from west and then back to south and east, north, they shall say this has never, ever happened before in our country and in our culture. I mean, just just right there, he goes to show you that something's going to happen that's never happened before. Uh, and it's going to change everything because of an exposure that he's about to, the mortal wound that yeah. you've just been referring. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so something happens and then back to the analogy of the train tracks, right? After that event, you can't ever go, you can't unsee what you now saw. You can't undo what God just did, right? It's like mm -hmm. after Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are standing in a fire, there's three of them, but there's four in the fire, Jesus Christ in the middle of them, right? And fair, oh, Nebuchadnezzar is watching this, right? He's like, you, you can't unsee that event. Right. And they, and they walk out unscathed. Don't even smell like fire. N nothing, right? So when this event happens, you can't unsee it. When this event happens, the deaths that maybe come with it, you can't undo that. Like everything on that moment in time, 
onwards, you can never go back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just it for the, yeah, you can't go back after something like that. I know, I know like this obviously isn't the end and you know, that evil will rise again, like they always do. And you know, as, as things progress later on down your timeline that you have, but it's like, you know, we try to get that point across to, to everybody here when this stuff happens and a year goes by to do not get comfortable with uh, don't get lazy with your surroundings because you know, mm. evil is going to try and start trying to implement, implement, implement. They're, they're not going to stop until Jesus returns. Um, well, you, you said ahead. it right because that's God's battle. See, Jesus's uh -huh. battle is to bind Satan and throw him in the pit for a thousand years. That's, his, you know, that's scriptural, right? That's not my job. It's not yours. It's not ours, right? Because we all have our things we're supposed to do for the kingdom, but that definitely isn't ours, <laughs> you know? And, and that's important to understand. But also, you know, why, think of it this way, to expand on what you just said, Israel. Why did Pharaoh raise Joseph to, the to be his second in command in 24 hours? He put him in command of all the world at the time. Because that's basically Egypt was the world, right? He and the only one he would have to answer to was the Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. So Joseph became in control of all the world at the time in only 24 hours. Think about that, right? But why did he get that position? Because of the wisdom he portrayed, because he had godly wisdom given to him by God. But what was his position and what was his appointing to what? Prepare for the coming famine. So you said, no, a year goes by, don't get comfortable. You're right. See, you're exactly right because what's coming is a season that God's giving us to prepare for what's coming. That's right. And he's going to provide more than enough. He's going to provide so much, you don't even, you won't even be able to comprehend how much is about to come your way, because that's mm -hmm. our God. So he's going to provide so much that you're going to be blessed to be a blessing. There's going to be more wealth that you can ever imagine. And then that's going to come with miracle cures and cancer treatments and cures for everything. The whole laying of hands, arms grow back, legs grow back, eyesight. You know, we're going to see miracle. We're going to, we're going to see signs. And wonders. We're going to see miracles, right? Mm -hmm. But during, is it the, because the glory is on earth, right? right? Remember the chart? Three and a half years yep. of a misery <laughs> of hell on earth, and then three and a half years of glory. So, yes, it took three and a half years. It sucked, didn't it? But you also got to see evil's agenda. But now, for the next three and a half minimum, guess what you get? The greatest. Three and a half years you could you've ever dreamed you can because you haven't even dreamed this. This is going to be better than any dream that's coming your way. Yeah, you actually, don't even understand how great that's what great is going to be. Actually, it's it's funny because in a in a prophecy when he's talking about this, he he says, uh, and the people will say, "Oh, we could have never dreamed of anything like this," oh, and man. it's 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 that glorious, you know, uh, you know, ah, I don't even have the right words to you know. Uh, more than abundance, yes. you know. Uh, right. Well, that would line up with that would line up with two, the year two thousand twenty-seven too. Yep. Yes. <clears throat> we'll be on the veil of by that time. We're beyond the veil of limitations. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, but then twenty. So that takes you into twelve and a half years forward. I mean, twelve hundred and sixty right. days forward, twenty twenty-seven. But then there's still. Uh, another there's another cycle of time after that because in the because the cycle is going to continue right you've got another three and a half after that right we're rolling three and a half year cycles into the seven year tribulation that's mm -hmm. kind of what God revealed to me so people you know thinking oh no there's specific timing for things to happen in the world just like Jesus Christ as much as he's returning he's not coming back tomorrow June 26th. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm to come back tomorrow, June 7th, as an example. He's not coming back, you know, the day after June 8th. He is coming back, but the reason he's not coming back in June of this year, as an example, is because you have to, you, you it's, it's, it's in the heavenlies. 
Revelation 12 sign was the astrological marking of Virgo giving birth to Jesus. But he's already, you know, he's already born on earth 2,000 years ago. So that was a marker. That same marker happened 2,000 years ago. So in 2017, Jesus is only what, 20, uh, 2018, uh, 1920 to 122. He's like tw he's like six years old in the heavenlies right now. Like so the point being is he's there's no wedding right now. Children don't get married. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. everything's happening in specific timing. And the 1260-day cycle that I've illustrated is a, is deeply embedded into this cycle of time, ultimately which leads into the Great Tribulation, which then leads to the return of Christ in the future. Right. Right. We need the fulfillment of all things. Yes. For mm -hmm. any of that. I know there's, you, you still, you see some people that are, they're on the right direction, but um, I try and correct everybody when, because it's almost a lazy statement that they think that this is going to take evil out forever. And I'm like, e right. evil ain't going until Jesus returns. Like, well, because see, that that is from the pits. Of, see, people reference that a lot, and that is directly from the pits of hell. That's that is specifically Satan's lie. Because why does Satan lie like this? He wants you to not be prepared. That's the essence of it. So why do they talk about the rapture? You know why? The rap, the, you know, the, the pre-trib rapture stuff. Very simple too. To, to, to not be prepared. I'm not going to do anything. I don't need to do anything. Because God's going to come and take me out of here. See, all of this is evil's trick to not have you prepare. Mm -hmm. But how many times does it say in the Bible, prepare? You know, you got the 10 virgins. Five God said, I don't know you. Why did he say that? Because they didn't prepare. Get it? He, mm -hmm. They didn't prepare. What did Noah do? He built an ark to prepare. You see, the Bible is all about prepare. Mm-hmm. But on the other end of it, evil wants you to not prepare. So he constantly is telling you, oh, this is, this is, you know, well, it's all going to be good. You know, Nasara Jasara, it's all great. Don't worry about it. We're all going to get free money and everybody's going to get, you know, kingdom projects to do because it's all good. And this is the thousand year millennial reign. It's a big fat lie. Why? Because I read it earlier to you. You want scripture? Because that's when it, it, it always comes back to scripture. Because if I'm saying anything, it better be in scripture if I'm going to say this is exactly how this is going to play out because it's scriptural. So, what does Revelation 13 11 through 12 say? It's right here. I'm going to read this to you about the mortal wound. Okay. The evil that you're seeing in this world right now. Okay. Let th this is what's going to happen to it. Then I saw another beast rise out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb and it spoke like a dragon. Please pay attention here. It exercised all the authority of the first beast. So mystery Babylon is the first beast. It's the harlot. Okay. Mystery Babylon is the first beast. And it, and it makes the earth and its inhabitants, so this beast that's going to rise in the future, it's going to make the earth and its inhabitants worship this first beast, Mystery Babylon, mm -hmm. whose mortal wound was healed. Mm. That's good. So that's the rise of the beast system. So anybody that's that's spewing things like, you know, this is going to be a, this is awesome. This is a, a thousand year millennial reign starting now. This is great. Um, did you read Revelation 13 verse 11 through 12? Right. See, the problem is they, and it's, and, you know, whether they do it intentionally, I think a lot of people just do it unintentionally. They're just, they're trying to understand Revelation, but until you start doing you know large math calculations running forwards and backwards you come to realize it's too early right it's too early and, and you know, like like your point about 2027 that's a very important time point again why because it lies into the 20 the 1260 day cycle you know i've already late in the presentation i've re i've done all the math into the mm -hmm. future uh, again, my math may not be 100% perfect, but I'm telling you, it's pretty darn accurate <laughs> because because what I've because I because it lands in the future on some really critical dates. 
that I know are yeah. critical in the future and it's landing right on them. So it's pointing to how this is potentially going to play out again. God's, you know, got the, the final, you know, it's, it's his story, but I'm just telling you um, that, you know, the beast will rise again. And, and, and that's what we, you know, we talked about Obama coming in through the, you know, through the United Nations, because we know that the beast rises out of the East, right? He comes out of Europe. The beast is not in the United States. The beast comes out of Europe. And so that being said, the United States will end up being, the, you know, and this is fulfilled prophetic words, the United States will be the greatest place to live during end times. Why? Because God kicks the crap out of evil, right? He's he's going to, he's going to, the vengeance, his mind saved the Lord. Evil is going to flee the United States, never come back here. Never come back here to the degree that, that it was. Why? Because we have a covenant with God. God made a covenant with the United States. And so and, we're this yeah. is a brother and sister relationship into the end with Israel, United States and Israel. This will be this is we're going we're, this will be into the end, right into right. the return of Christ. And the United States will be an incredible place to live during end times because of, of what of what happens, you know, potentially this month in, into July. Of potentially events that, that God's going to manifest. So, you know, they're going to do the glory manifesting on earth. That's going to cause the mortal wound to evil. And then the second event will be the return of Christ in the future. Right. Yeah. And it, it would make more sense for, you know, chaos to be around Europe in that time, because I feel like, you know, Israel is going to be the center of attention in, in the end of times. But uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But then, but then remember, there's going to be a part where they uh, will come up with a peace treaty. Yep. The peace treaty will divide Israel, and then God will say, well, you've divided my land, now I'll divide yours. Uh, somehow the United States will be tied in with that, and then you're going to see the uh, um, Mississippi, or the United States will basically have a huge earthquake. That'll be potentially the time for the collapse, the second devaluation of the U.S. dollar, and then the U.S. dollar starts to go to, you know, starts to collapse even worse. Um and then that's going to be a very, very powerful time point for the for the world, because that's also there with the Mississippi is supposed to reverse direction, how it flows. So basically massive, massive earth shifting going on uh, right after that, that peace treaty is signed. And then they still have to build the third temple. You know, right. where is that? OK, where is the third temple? Well, you don't need a third temple. Well, ask a Jew. OK, they're building that third temple. <laughs> oh, I've seen I've seen so much right? talk about building but, but the third but from temple. a Christian standpoint. OK. You don't need it. That's true because Jesus Christ was the resurrection, right? So you, right. he was the Passover lamb. So you don't, from a Christian standpoint, you do not need the third temple. But go ask a Jew that question. Oh, no, they're building that temple, okay? But they're going to and ultimately find out when they build a temple, you know, it's going to get desecrated by the Antichrist who walks into it and says, you know, calls himself the great I am. So, you know, these are all things into the future. Yeah, I think of the aliens are about to be exposed here soon, too. Why do the aliens are like, why are they exposed, right? The aliens, because we know that they're going to be part of the great deception, right? They're going to mm -hmm. come out and say, hey, we seeded humanity. We took the caveman. We took our DNA. We made you guys, right? And they're, and they're going to appear in the world's going to go, wow, that's awesome, right? And they're going to buy the lie. Right. And that's the great deception, you know, so, you know, but but we're going to start seeing things pop up here probably sooner uh, with the rest of aliens as well, too, because remember when the, when the dollar crashes, you know, follow the money. So the money's been used for bribes and payoffs to keep it's called hush money. Yeah. When the, when the hush money doesn't work anymore, the truth comes out. So we're going to see exposure about, you know, UFOs and things like that very soon. You're probably, you know, this, you know, strange July. I don't know. Maybe yeah, UFOs talking about July. It. No, we're no, but we're gonna see stuff. Like it's gonna get yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, this is just like a sprinkle <laughs> right now. Okay, it's gonna get really good. What's about to happen here? Maybe July, August, or September, or whatever. As that new next three and a half years begins, right? But why is that important? Because the alien technology that's been hidden from us will be the anti gravity that's gonna cause you know, cause us to ultimately soon enough have flying cars. Right. So, so, so we're going to have technology that's going to cause, and this technology is made with what? Silver. Right. And so why does silver go bananas in terms of price? <laughs> because, because the technology, right. People are like, you know, it's like, forget the, and the, and the, and the Teslas are going to become, uh, the Teslas and the electric cars are going to become extinct because when silver is priced at say 600 bucks an ounce, that Tesla battery becomes worth a hundred thousand dollars and no one's buying Teslas anymore. You see what I'm saying? So the, yeah. so electric batteries go bye-bye because uh, the silver is too expensive to make a, a battery. So you, it's like everything we know is going to flip. And I know everything I'm saying sounds crazy, 
But you have to understand when silver is at a thousand bucks an ounce or two thousand dollars an ounce, um, it's at two thousand bucks an ounce, and it's going to go higher than that ultimately yet. But when these things happen, you know, you've got technology coming out. Um, because silver is not supposed to be at 2000 bucks an ounce or a thousand bucks an ounce, but if it is, it means the world you know the financial system is upside down, which means that truths are out, which means that we're finding out hey, um, and uh, UFOs are just you know, it's just it's not so much a UFO, it's a technology behind it, right? It's the fact that it's 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 magnetism, so it's just that the car gets magnetized and it repels off the earth. Mm -hmm. Bingo. And so how do they how do they build uh, the great pyramids? Right. Boom. You magnetize one of those huge rocks. Boom. You know, one person can move it with their hand. Right. Or several yeah. people move it. So all this technology is going to come out very soon. But it, it's all based on the collapse of the dollar. And I know all of this sounds crazy, but bottom line is we're with you, Bo. Bottom oh, line yeah. is all I know is that in my heart, it's all it's all coming. And it's all. Well, yeah, soon. I mean. Everything, everything shows, even like with, uh, you know, like we've always said, like what you're seeing right now is like they tried pushing God's timeline and it's just a precursor of what the future will be. But obviously the future will be a lot worse uh, considering what they're going to do. But I mean, even uh, in that one prophecy, uh, when when Kim calls him out, but Biden, he tried already dividing Jerusalem that failed miserably. Yeah. And obviously with the, the, the mark of the beast, they kind of were trying to go for that. That ain't happening. So you can see it's all precursor stuff. But yes, everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, yeah. and that's why Revelation 13 is so perfect, perfect, because it really says it says, and they will worship that first beast. So another beast rises that for what it's basically saying is another beast will rise in the future that forces the world to worship the first beast. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So there's another massive yep. beast rises that forces the people of the world to worship that first beast who came back to life, who was resurrected, you know, so who whose mortal wound, because it was dead, the mortal wound was healed. And so that's the beast system. It's the res beast system resurrects the original this this beast right now but it's not going to have it's going to be really an interesting time because it won't have any gold and silver so the beast system that rises will not have gold and silver because the church has got it so all they're going to have is digital money they will not have any gold and silver so they're they're going to come in limping so the satanic system the, the mark of the beast system is going to come in without any gold and silver so the church has got it all so why do we care about the mark of the beast? Because it's for right. they, them, their, right? But not yep. my children who are called by my name. Mm -hmm. like, it's really beautiful how God orchestrated all of this. So God's bride is not going to be without. It's going to be with everything. The bride's going to have everything it needs. And then some. It's going to be really well-funded, everything it needs bride, waiting for the return of Christ in the future. While those that think we're crazy or choose to live in the cities, those that, you know, that refuse to give up this world. Actually, it's a better way to describe it. Those that refuse to right. give up the, the pleasures of this world, this, this you know, the, what this world offers, because they're, you know, we're to live in it, but we're to be in the world, but not of the world. You know, they want to be of this world. They want it so bad. That those ones are gonna think that's about to happen here is so horrendous, right? And they they're gonna want it to come back so bad, and then it's gonna come back. It's gonna come back. It tells you right in Revelation thirteen, it comes back. Another beast comes back and raises this beast that was dead, and the system comes back to life. And they're like, "Yay, celebrate this <laughs> system return! The mystery Babylon just returned." And they're going to worship this system and they're going to gladly, there's going to be many people that gladly worship the system and take the mark of the beast. Right. But on the other end of it, the glory that man, but before that event happens, this is critical. The world will have seen the glory of God on earth. The world will have seen with their own eyes, hands, arms growing back, vision being restored. The world would have seen signs and wonders, miracles that they can't explain. And if, after all of that, God manifests in his glory, shows signs and wonders, does incredible things for the world to witness, like in the time of Jesus, to witness these miracles on earth. And they still choose Babylon. They still choose evil. You see, that's 
ultimately they're like God's mm-hmm. given them a chance. So there's going to be a billion soul harvest, yep. but there's also many billion. There's you know billions or whatever are going to go on the other side because they refuse to wake up. They refuse to love Christ. They refuse to witness with. They refuse to acknowledge the miracles, the signs and wonders, because they so long for Babylon. Yeah, we. What yes, have we sir. said? You will when all this goes down. You will most certainly know that God is real, yeah. and you will you will know the truth, and you will get you to use that free will and decide who you who you want to serve. I want nothing to do with the world now. I don't right. need all this stuff to happen. Yeah. I don't want nothing to do with it now. I'm ready to get out in the country and uh, <laughs> live a simple life and and worship God and uh, and bless other people. I'm ready now. But I think people are going to have to make it. They're going to have to make a choice when all this goes down. What do you want to do with what? What future do you want for yourself? And exactly. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. Ah, that was great. That was great, Bo. Thank you. God bless both of you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I suppose we're at an hour and ten. I'll we'll wrap this puppy up. And might as well. That's a good, good spot to, mm-hmm. to end it. That was a great presentation as always. Thanks, yes. everybody, for coming to check it out. Obviously, go check it out again. Go check it I already seen some people say they, they're going back. They're going back to watch it. <laughs> I would watch this a few <laughs> times because we really got to do some good stuff here on this interview. Absolutely. Definitely, Absolutely. definitely watch it a couple times. I would finish on this point. Number one is okay. you got to have faith, okay, because something's crazy about to go down. When this event goes down, it's going to be scary. But if you know that Jesus Christ is in complete mm. control. If you know God's in control, Jesus Christ in control, the Holy Spirit's in control. If you know the Trinity's got this, God has got this. There's nothing to fear. You're good. No matter what they throw at you, no matter what happens, who cares? God's got this. Remember what happened. Jesus died, and they walked into the most. They proved how stupid evil. Evil showed how stupid evil is by literally walking into God's plan. So whatever happens, just know that evil is walking right into the greatest trap in human history. Okay. Know that. Make sure you got some food and water in your house. Why? Because you don't want to go to stores and stuff's going down and I'm doubt they're even going to be open. So make sure you got some stuff in the house. Okay. So you're yeah, not stressed. It's going to be, it's going to be okay? chaos. Whatever. Just you're not stressed. Make sure you got stuff. You're not stressed. Okay. And then, you know, lastly, if you do have financial means, you know, you have, if you have precious metals, fantastic. You know, if you don't, you know, if you think what we're talking about makes sense, just know that when the tables flip, all I can say is that I'm not going to give financial advice. I'm just saying when the tables flip, Haggai 2 verse 8, the silver and the gold are mine, say the Lord. So guess whose favor they're going to flip in? He's right. going to destroy the financial system and the tables will flip in God's favor in terms of his money. And that's just how this is going to play out. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Chris. Any final words, sir? No, nope. Bo, as always, love talking to you. I, I just like listening. I just like taking it all in. I mean, I always learn something new, and we just uh, we thank you, and uh, God bless you, and thanks, for thanks everybody, for coming out again tonight. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what you guys a great Thursday. time to be alive, man. Amen. See you guys Thursday with the old general. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, everybody have a good night, and we'll talk to you uh, in a little bit. Have a good one. Beverly Hills Precious Metals Exchange is a client-focused firm devoted to assisting our clients with precious metals. Our clients range from first-time to serious coin collectors and investors seeking to add precious metals to their investment portfolios. We are not interested in volatile investments, leveraged products, and intangible assets. With rising inflation and the devaluing of the dollar hurting middle-class families, investing in gold and silver ensures protection for your hard-earned money. Save the value of your money today by investing in gold and silver at Beverly Hills Precious Metals.